Hey there guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you all the books that I have read in 2019, which is a video I'm always super excited about because I love reading and I love stats. So first off I'm gonna tell you a couple of stats about my reading and then we're gonna jump into every single book I've read this year. I'm gonna list them from the worst books to the best books so you have kind of a ranking and at the end I'm gonna talk you through my absolute favorites of the year. So I'm gonna jump right in so we don't get a super long video and I hope you enjoy it. So to drag my reading this year I used the spreadsheet by Sophie. Portal on the Pages is, is the channel. She already uploaded her new spreadsheet for 2020, which I think is even better than the 19 one. But I'm just gonna talk you through a couple of the stats. I will try to remember to also add in the little pictures so you have a bit of a visual for that as well. So I'm gonna look down because I have to read some things. So, so yeah. My goal was to read 52 books this year and I actually managed to read or finish 78 books. I do not DNF books regularly, so all of these books I definitely read all the way through. Um, I'm gonna do page count a little bit differently with other stats because this one is not quite accurate and all this is star rating I'm gonna do later. So for the month, my best reading month um, book-wise was July because of the Booktubeathon. I read 10 books in that month and on average I read 7 books per month, which is amazing. And yeah, I didn't expect that to be honest. Page-wise, my best reading month was October. You all know how much I love my October reading. I did reading vlogs for every week in October and not monthly. So that um, shows how much I love October books. And again, on average, um, this says I read about 2000 pages a month. As I said, it's not quite accurate, um, but pretty close, I guess, to my own calculations. So if we look at the books that I've read, I think the biggest genre is fantasy because <laughs> it's actually my favorite genre. So I read 17 fantasy books and um, closely followed, weirdly, by romance. <laughs> What's happening to me? Um, I read 10 romance books, and then I have a couple of genres I, I, I read eight books from, and that would be horror and non-fiction, surprisingly, because I didn't really think I would um, really read non-fiction, but somehow I did. So that's the genres I read the most from, and then page-wise, most of my books are between 300 and 500 pages. And the longest book I read was It. It has about 2,000 and no, 1,200 pages. That was my longest book and I read five books that were below 100 pages. So pretty average, I would say. Most books I gave um, around 3.5 or 4 stars to, which is quite good. We will get into that in a second because I ranked them by star rating. I read mostly paperbacks, but I also listened to 17 audiobooks this year, which is more than I did last year, definitely. And I'm very happy about that. And publication year. Usually the books I read are published in the last 10 years. I read most of my books from female authors, so about 70% were female authors. When I read books by trans women, I categorize them as female as well, so they don't show up separately. But I think I read at least two books from trans women. I'm not quite sure about the um, whether that's quite correct or whether I'm missing one in my head right now. Um, most books are from the US, unfortunately, and also about a third is by POC authors, which is a little bit low. I would like that to be higher, but honestly, I don't really choose my books by these kind of categories. Um, so yeah, maybe I should do that more, but it's just something I don't really do. And funny enough, most authors were new to me, which is a thing I often do. I don't tend to read... Um, the whole backlist of an author, but just the books that I'm interested in. Okay, 
I do read a lot not translated uh, fiction because, as I said, most uh, books I read are from the US, the UK and Germany, so I don't have to read them translated. But I do also read a couple of books translated, especially if I get them from the library, they're usually in German. So I've read about one third of my books in German and two thirds in English this year. That's the only languages I can read, so... Another thing I think is quite interesting, I bought 39 books this year, two of those are coming out next year so they don't really count, but I just um, throw them in there as well because I bought them or I ordered them already. Um, and I spent about 360 euros on books this year, which is quite good. I mean, um, I have bought about half the amount of books that I've read because I want to reduce my TBR and also I get a lot of books from the library. So that's actually quite a good number. And then library-wise, I checked out around 29 books. I also have maybe two or three books I borrowed from friends, but 29 I have borrowed this year and this saved me 330 euros. So definitely love the library for that. So I probably didn't reduce my TBR by a lot, but I still feel uh, really good about this. Um, I still feel like the books I have on my TBR right now are mostly books I'm still excited about. And I also read a ton of the books I bought this year. Most of those that I bought were the audiobooks and I always buy an audiobook and listen to it straight away. So um, they don't end up on my TBR really. Um, and with books I ordered, um, in paperbacks, I still read a ton of them. Not the ones that I've ordered just before the end of the year, obviously, which were four books, but all the other ones got read pretty quickly. So as I said, I'm quite happy about all of that. So then I also checked out my page count. So from all the physical books I've read, I managed to read 20,218 pages this year. And this um, means I read about 55 pages each day. My um, minimum goal is 50, so I surpassed that. And last year I managed to read 51 pages per day, so I even did a little bit better than last year, which I'm super happy about. And then I think my best month again was October, as I just said, with um, 2,500 pages in one month. That was pretty crazy. Um, listening wise, I also calculated how many minutes and hours I listen to audiobooks. So I listened to about 11,600 minutes of audiobook this year and this is about 149 hours and this totals to about 16 hours a month or 32 minutes a day which is quite crazy, honestly. I didn't think I would have listened to so much audiobook this year, but I definitely um, picked up my pace with that and listened to a lot more than last year. Again, that is something I very much enjoy because usually with my audiobooks, I get books that have just been published, which otherwise I wouldn't get around to so fast. So I'm just really, really enjoying all my stats and I'm very very proud and I'm very happy of what a good reading year 2019 was for me. So overall I've read eight books more than last year which is great. I was aiming for 80 something but I didn't quite catch that but as I said my minimum goal 52 I surpassed that with flying colors and so because I don't want this to be too long of a video, let's get into the ranking of all the books I have read this year. Unfortunately, this year we have to start with two star books because I actually read two books I gave two stars to. Both of those I don't have anymore. One was a very bad audiobook um, and I've returned that to Audible because that works out, fortunately. And the other one was a book I borrowed from my best friend. I'm just gonna say a couple of words more about these two books because they were my least favorite and I like bashing books a little bit. And then I'm just gonna run through till the top and then I'm gonna talk about my favorites a little bit as well. 
So the first book I really disliked and gave two, two stars to was When Dimple Met Rishi, probably my least favorite book of the year. I listened to that on audio and I really did not like a lot about this. Now firstly, the main characters, the boy main character got me so frustrated, I really really did not like him. And the girl character, while annoying, still had a little bit of appeal. <clears throat> I liked the idea that she was into tech and she was, you know, not um, gonna divert from her path. <clears throat> What's going on with one more? Wow, I'm losing my voice, that's great. Whatever, um, I really liked the idea, but the whole execution was terrible. And honestly, I mean, they were at a, a tech event, so you would think that some kind of tech appears somewhere in this the whole thing but really it was all just the romance and since I didn't like the characters and I didn't like how they fit together and their kind of what do you call that their chemistry nah wasn't for me I really disliked this book um, the other one which I don't remember the English name uh, the German title is Als der Zufall sich verliebte by Joachim Blum, which is supposed to be kind of romantic and um, a bit of a fantasy, but yeah, it was very forgettable for one because I don't remember a lot about it. I think the only good thing I could say about the book is that you can read it very, very quickly. It had kind of an interesting idea, but I, as I said, I don't even remember it because I disliked the book so much. I really didn't like the characters and the whole message at the end was so, so, so horrible. And yeah, I just, ugh. it was something to do with like changing, um, changing fate basically. And then this whole book just came to the conclusion that the, fucking fate was changed so two characters get together while the female character made clear in so many ways that she wasn't even interested in this relationship. No, oh, I hated this book so much and the author wanted me to believe that was romantic. Like, no thank you. Okay, that was my ranty bit and now let's get on to the 2.5 star books. So these were still books I did not like and I would not recommend unless you have a very different reading taste than I have. P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Hahn, second book in this series. Herz Dame Sticht oder Murder She Me Out by Rita Mae Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown. This is, I think, the fourth or fifth in the series. Plantation Memories by Carla Quilomba. This is a non-fiction I did not like. Into the Turning Deep by Mira Grant, a horror standalone. Now we're gonna continue with these three star books. Three star books for me are books that I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but if the premise sounds interesting to you, I would still say try them. The first book is Worauf die Affen warten by Jasmina Katra, Isola by Isabel Abedi, Das Herz der Nacht by Judith Lennox, The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, Pages for You by Sylvia Brownrigg, The Sculpt's Bridal or The Schandmaske by Minette Walters, The Night of the Living Dummy or Die Puppe mit dem starren Blick by R.L. Stein. This is, ooh, I don't know which one in the series, like number seven, eight, something like that. Always and Forever, Lara Jean, the third book and conclusion to this series. Now we're getting into the 3.5 star books and these are books that were enjoyable but not always everything I was looking for. Seasons Meetings by Emmy Dunn, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dorr, Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, Sea Prayer or Am Abend vor dem Meer by Khaled Husseini, Defy Me by Tahara Mafi, this is book 5 in the series. The Starlit Wood, which is a short story collection. This was edited by Dominic Parisian and Nara Wolf. Böse Absichten by Keigo Higashino, which is a Japanese crime novel. The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey. Little Cat Chi by Konami Kanata. Truly Madly Guilty by Leanne Moriarty. Solaris by Stanislav Lem. Former Girls of Ham by J.R.R. Tolkien. Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Zadawi, 
Nussknacker und Mäusekönig bei E.T.A. Hoffmann, This is a German Classic and The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. Next up we're gonna talk about some books I gave four stars to, or all the books I gave four, four stars to. These books I really enjoyed a lot and I would recommend them. They were just not my favorite books. Vacations from Hell, a short story collection or a novella collection. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. The Queens of Innes Lear by Tessa Gretton. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Casey. The Lord of the Rings Sketchbook by Alan Lee. The Queen of the Tierling by Erika Johansson. Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rainy Edo Lodge. Animal Farm by George Orville. Unbroken, a short story collection edited by Marike Nikam. Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Night Film or Die Amerikanische Nacht by Marisha Pethel. Wilder Girls by Rory Power. The House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Gregg. Monstrous Volume 4 by Sana Takeda and Marjorie Liu. The Haunting of Blackwood House by Darcy Coates. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Edward. Strange Grace by Tessa Gretton. Soccer Girls by Claire Legrand. Malala, the Young Readers Edition by Malala Yousafzai. Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. The Christmas Party by Karen Swan. My True Love Gave to Me, a collection of short stories by or edited by Stephanie Perkins. Ten Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. Heimlich Unheimliche Weihnachts- und Wintergeschichten by Barbara Bartos Höppner. Now we're getting into the 4.5 star books. So these are books that I absolutely loved, but maybe they didn't change my life or maybe they didn't just quite hit my expectations. So let's get started. Monstrous Volume 3 by Sana Takeda and Marjorie Liu. Lovely War by Julie Berry. Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. Real Queer America by Samantha Allen. Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Kuran. A Thousand Beginnings and Endings. These are short stories and this is edited by Alan O and Elsie Chapman. Das Imperium, the last book in the series by Anne Leckie. Birthday by Meredith Rutho. Welcome to Camp Nightmare or Nachts wenn alles schläft by R.L. Stein. This is also um, book 9 in the series. The Invasion of the Tierling and The Fate of the Tierling, book 2 and 3 in this series by Erika Johansson. Fatal Voyage by Katie Reich. I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai. The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand, which was a reread. Okay, now we're on to the five star books and these are my absolute favorites. These are books that changed my life, that were so good that I just want to reread them time and time again. And first off, we're gonna start with the rereads that I did because, you know, they're not really the favorites of this year, but I just reread them this year. So these are in no particular order. I reread It by Stephen King, The Simmerillion by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, and The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is the graphic novel and I really enjoyed that as well. And now I have five new books that I've read for the first time this year that I gave five stars to and I'm trying to rank these and talk about them a little bit more. I think number five would be Dumplin by Julie Murphy. I got this one from the library and I was surprised how much I loved it. Obviously I had all the I had heard all the good praise about this book, but I didn't really believe it, so I was blown away by this book. This is about a girl who is um, overweight or she's just a little bit chubby or whatever you want to call it. And she decides to take part in this pageant, I think it's called. And it's all about her struggles and her new friends she finds because of that. And I loved that book. It was great. Number four is Und du bist nicht zurückgekommen by Marceline Loreda Evans. And this is a book written by a French woman who was taken to a concentration camp by the Nazis 
and her father was taken too and she survived and he did not and so she writes a book or a letter, a very long letter um, to him to explain to him what happened to her, how her life turned out but also what happened to the world while he was not there anymore and yeah, just a very sad but also very great book I would highly recommend. Number three would go to In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. I know this is a book that has been discussed a lot, but it really hit me personally and I did not expect that. I really, really, really liked this book. I flew through it and I even got another book about North Korea and a girl who um, escaped ready to go from the library because this intrigued me so much. and. I know there's a lot of debate about this book and I've talked about it before, but the thing is that I enjoyed it and I needed to read this and it also gave me some clarity about my own life and so this is my top three. And now it gets really really hard because these two books are now so different. I love them both, but I'm gonna put my enjoyment on the backseat a little bit and so on. The second place is The Trials of Morgan Crow, the first book in the Nevermore series. This is, about, this is all about Morgan Crow, who is supposed to die on her 12th birthday, I think. But then everything goes completely wrong and a weird man appears who whisks her away to a new world she didn't know about. And there she has to go through the trials to get into a... A weird school with people who have abilities. Thing is, Morrigan doesn't really have an ability. So yeah, I really really love this. I read this together with my best friend, which was a great experience. We have the second book ready to go. Um, yeah, it's just so amazing. It's just as great as everyone tells you it is. So I can't wait to reread this in 2020. I want to start it right now. And then the best book I have read in 2019. I know many people have read it before and have raved about it before, but sometimes I'm a little bit slow. The best book I've read in 2019 was The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Now, I know so many people have read this, but this is a book about the Underground Railroad, which was a system to get um, black people from the southern to the northern states to save them from slavery. And in this fictional version of that, it is actually a train, which it wasn't in real life. So this is all about two black slaves who would try to escape together and what happens to them. Amazing book. It was just amazing. I read this during Booktubeathon, so I am pretty sure that I will reread this this year and just take my time with it a little bit more. But it was an amazing book and if I look back on all my reading, it was definitely the best one. Even though Morgan is looking at me right now, like Morgan is a very, very close second. But yeah, I think I'm pretty confident that um, The Underground Railroad was my favorite read of 2019. And that concludes this video. So I would love to hear what you have read and loved and disliked in 2019. I'm pretty sure I have watched a ton of videos all about that already because, you know, we all love watching these wrap up -y things. I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a like or a nice comment if you did and I will talk to you soon. Bye!